Good afternoon. Today is Good Friday. And each year on this Friday, we try to remember what Christ endured for us on the cross. And this year, I I thought I'd spend some time in the Old Testament and read a couple of passages that describe in great detail his suffering for us. And I'm, I'm so thankful for Christ's suffering on my behalf because I am a sinner in need of forgiveness. And the scripture teaches us without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. So this, uh, this Friday, we are going to read together Psalm 22 and then another passage of prophecy about the suffering servant in Isaiah 53. More than likely, if you spent any time studying the scriptures, this is probably a familiar passage. These passages are familiar to you, and uh, they are worth setting our hearts and our minds on as we see God at work in our lives through his Son for the forgiveness of our sin. So I'll be reading uh, from Psalm 22 and Isaiah 52 and 53, as we examine and consider what Christ endured for us on the cross. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but I find no rest. Yet you are holy enthroned on the praises of Israel. In you our fathers trusted. They trusted, and you delivered them. To you they cried and were rescued. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not a man, scorned by mankind and despised by the people. All who see me mock me. They make mouths at me. They wag their heads. He trusts in the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him, for he delights in him. Yet you are he who took me from the womb. You made me trust you at my mother's breasts. On you was I cast from my birth, and from my mother's womb you have been my God. Be not far from me, for trouble is near. There is none to help. Many bulls encompass me. Strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their mouths at me like ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax that is melted within my breast. My strength is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death. For dogs encompass me, a company of evildoers encircles me. They have pierced my hands and feet. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. But you, O Lord, do not be far off. O you, my help, come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword, my precious life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion. You have rescued me from the horns of the wild oxen. I will tell of your name to my brothers. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. And stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. For he has not despised or abhorred the affliction of the afflicted. He has not hidden his face from him but has heard when we cried to him. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows will perform before, I will perform before those who fear him. The afflicted shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall worship before you. For kingship belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. All the prosperous of the earth eat and worship. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust." even the one who could not keep himself alive. Posterity shall serve him. It shall be told of the Lord to the coming generation. They shall come and proclaim his righteousness to a people yet unborn. 
that he has done it. In the prophecy of Isaiah, chapter 52, starting in verse 13, and we'll read the entirety of chapter 53 as well. Behold, my servant shall act wisely. He shall be high and lifted up and shall be exalted. As many were astonished at you, his appearance was so marred beyond human semblance and his form beyond that of, a, of the children of mankind. So, how, so shall he sprinkle many nations. Kings shall shut their mouths because of him. For that which was not been told them, they see. And that which they have not heard, they understand. Who has believed what he has heard from us? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. As one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not." Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his wounds we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned, every one, to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and then he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that is before its shearers is silent, so he opened not his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away, and as for his generation, who considered that he was cut off out of the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. And they made his grave with the wicked, and with a rich man in his death, although he had done no violence." And there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him. He has put him to grief. When his soul makes an offering for guilt, he shall see his offspring. He shall prolong his days. The will of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Out of the anguish of his soul, he shall see and be satisfied. By his knowledge shall the righteous one, my servant, make many to be accounted righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will divide him a portion with the many, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his soul to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many, and makes intercession for the transgressors. Let's pray. Our Father, I thank you for words spoken hundreds of years before the life of Jesus Christ on earth, and I pray that our our worship of you today, in our worship of you today, we are reminded of the suffering that Jesus endured for us on the cross. I thank you for these words spoken so long ago that spoke forward to the suffering of the obedient son and how by his wounds, by his stripes, we are healed. And I pray that this day, this year, as we celebrate your death, your burial, and your resurrection, that we are reminded of the great price by which you showed us your love. And I pray that you change our hearts even now. In Jesus' name, amen. If you're looking for a place to worship on Easter Sunday, on the resurrection, I invite you to be a part of our worship at Aberdeen here in Pueblo. It's at 301 Cleveland Street. Our Bible study time is at 9.30. Our uh, worship service is at 11 o'clock. And we are looking forward to celebrating the risen Savior who paid the penalty for our sins and offers us new life. So let's celebrate together this season. And thank you for being a part of our Good Friday celebration.